Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This is the Fortress of Ink Seizure, submitted on the Discord by Mad Wolf. If you would like to send in a fortress for me to have a look at on this show, simply go down into the description of this video and join the Discord and go to the DF Save Sharing Room and have a peek at what other people are doing. If you are using a bunch of mods, please also include your mods folder so that I have a chance of loading the fortress more and more and sometimes less. Um, if the game has updated since your version has, has been posted, um, if the mods are out of date and there's conflict, they don't auto update and then it just breaks the save and I can't load it So uh, just simply attach some permission to use it in a video and uh, link your save uh, on the file sharing service of your choice First off, I just want to say that this is a really cool little area. I really love these little kind of secluded um, Mountain setups that happen sometimes where like you really can't actually access everything or it like straight up just says not accessible It does say it's accessible in here, which is maybe even better But just kind of like this little almost secret garden in that uh, like mountain zone anyway uh, actual factions a little further up here kind of attached to this little mountain up here but uh, we are on a volcano and this is once, once again the fortress of ink seizure uh, the local government is the dabbling books which is a good name and the civilization is the wall of beaks so the great wall of beaks of the and the dabbling books made this little fortress here which is a volcano fortress now there seems to be two entrances uh, one being a little further down uh, going up and over the volcano itself and then the other one uh, being up and on the side over here so we're going to follow this one on the side which goes over top of a bunch of cage traps into kind of this little this little zone in here which has just kind of stuff growing on the ground and nothing super fancy and then there's a little downward stairway here which uh, appears to connect to the volcano entrance so I think we will now go move over to the volcano entrance so we've got these granite and glass and various other material roads all over outside and then this granite bridge which leads into the fortress itself if we hit Z we can very quickly uh, see these this the, the the barracks is kind of around the entrance as well as some guild halls and I just ended up somewhere uh, nonsense uh, and uh, the, these these various um, uh, training zones. So we got this one up here full of arrows, and over here we, ha as you can see, we actually have a whole bunch of different squads. Now, something that I, I wanted to note about this fortress, the thing that really stood out to me about it, is that it is on a volcano, as, as you've already noticed. But there's also a very large underground uh, tree growing area, which we're going to have to take a peek at as we get further down. So up here is mostly military on this first level. If we move back up, there's a few kind of empty zones with not a lot going on, and this very large kind of livestock paddock that uh, appears to just kind of have a lot of llamas in it, and then a whole bunch of farmers workshops which have milk llama jobs queued up on repeat um, they also appear to be uh, harvesting llama wool and making it into uh, cloth I would assume um, if we go a little bit higher up uh, once again we just go back up to that previous zone so we're gonna move down there's also these ramps that go over here which is uh, mostly for trading I would assume uh, we are a capital and we don't have any uh, we, we don't have the the, um, the mountain home just yet uh, we do have the monarch and a mayor and a champion though so it is a pretty fully fledged fortress the monarch appears to be demanding bucklers uh, that is a lot of wood is something I'm just going to note right here. They do have the, the setup here where um, easy enough to just seal off any dwarves that are going to go mad. I personally don't like doing this because to me it just kind of feels cheesy. Like I feel it's 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 not like I I don't know. I believe the dwarves would have like an open office design and less of a like uh, personal office design. It's just odd to me just having all these here. Something that's kind of smart that I wanted to point out though is up here you can see these um, uh, the, the targets up here, they fall down one layer. And the, the reason that they, they're they doing this um, is at least in older versions, if they were to, if they hit a wall or if they hit a target with a wall behind it, uh, it destroys the arrow sometimes um, or the bolt. Uh, but if they just drop straight down, one layer, it doesn't destroy it. So um, you could set these to be automatically collected or just collect them whenever they run out on the surface. And that is a very good way of like making sure you don't run out of ammunition when training ranged soldiers. So as we move down more wood um, and then we can go a little further down. And then down here is uh, where all of the, uh, or, or, or where they have all of their glass furnaces as well as their kilns and magma furnaces. And one layer beneath you can see uh, we are getting uh, lava in from the uh, volcano. Now they do have a seal here um, and I've had some people ask they're like why would you have a seal on something like this when it's just gonna stay full anyway well it's to stop magma crabs from coming in because magma crabs can just swim in and then pop out um, and that's that's a little dangerous so I, I would much prefer if there are magma crabs on the map that they just go up to the surface and then peacefully walk off the edge of the map instead of wandering in and then the dwarves pick fights with them and then somebody gets torched um, in here on the inner levels we we have a space for the mayor and uh, just over here uh, Mestuth and whoever Erdim was um, if I check on no nobles uh, it looks like Mestuth was I don't actually see them on there but um, then down here we have the, the mayor's office as well as a nice little walkabout around the volcano if we move one layer down 
down. Uh, there is uh, just, you know, a bunch of storage as well as a artifact hold, uh, which has cage traps as well as locks. Something I would do with the artifact hold is I would I would chain up some dogs or some other cool animal um, and then leave these doors unlocked. So um, if something comes in and steals something from one of these or it's being taken because it's an artifact, um, they will probably get caught in those cage traps or at least used to in older versions of the game. That's what I would do just because then you can actually catch the possible thieves if there are any um somebody is leaving uh food in their in their living in their living quarters um i would uh check to see if they have a chest um oh, they do um uh, hmm. then that this is definitely a situation of uh soldiers uh, wearing backpacks which will definitely make that happen when they uh return to their bedrooms um yeah, uh, then they're using this kind of uh, neat little I like setup that was discovered not super long ago, but like you can like use um, one door to have multiple bedrooms, uh, which is I don't know, kind of a weird design to me in my brain. It doesn't make sense, but it certainly works in the game. It allows for it. This beautiful hospital. I think this is maybe my favorite portion of the fortress so far, uh, complete with a uh, wa uh, water fusy levels down beneath it, which is super cool. Um, so big fan of that. Um, and then oh, uh, as we move our way down, you can see that the water reservoir, and then over here we have power. Uh, the water is uh, flowing, uh, I think this is an aquifer? Yes, it's flowing out of this aquifer down into here and being used as a water supply for the hospital, and then also flowing off the side of the map here and powering all of these water wheels, um, which are in turn um, powering something. Let's scroll down and find out what. Uh, which are in turn powering all of these millstones from the looks of things. Maybe more as well. It's hard to tell. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely be running into that, but I'm gonna move back up real quick because I wanna move down through this slower. Uh, we can see all these different layers that have been uh, channeled out and it's kind of this interesting little ramp set up over there. Uh, but if we follow this down, uh, the, the, the actual stairway, uh, we hit this layer first and we are encountered with this massive stockpile filled with uh, bars and blocks from the looks of things, as well as that ramp that continues to go down. Uh, but if we move over to the edge here, you can see what they've been using all of that glass for. Uh, we have this massive glass kind of a library. Yeah, it's a it's massive glass library, uh, w which is a very bad area to wear a skirt in, um, unless you want yours to see your thong. Uh, but up here, uh, we have, um, you know, uh, some, some guild halls for various skills. And they kind of just go around. I love this kind of organic look to things. Personally, I would be doing different colors of floors just to kind of give a little bit more floor color variety. Uh, another little um, uh, artifact room over there. Uh, and uh, I love this kind of circular area. And then as we move down into uh, the main fortress, we have this gargantuan tavern. <laughs> this is ginormous. So there used to be a, uh, not, not really a, a bug is the wrong word to use. And then there's these runes down here. Um, th there, there used to be an issue uh, with taverns where dwarves would just go stand somewhere stationary and they would only make friends if they were within a certain distance. And I think that was version uh, 47.04 or maybe it was 001. I actually, I can't remember which version of 47 it was, but it was the, the previous main build of the game. And then there was an update in 2021 that changed it so that they clumped together um, and uh, stopped being as lonely. So instead of like having issues with the, the, the dwarves just like going into these taverns and then like, so like for, for a while there, the meta was, oh, have a tavern that's one tile. Um, <laughs> and then everybody would clump together and make friends. But um, because of this, uh, taverns like this, they would ha never have any friendships. Um, so this is just like bringing me back to like the, the old days when people used to make these massive taverns and you'd be like, why are all my dwarves so lonely? I also want to highlight the fact that this is a very dark tavern. Like it's surrounded by the, the, the corpses of the dead. Um, at the very least they didn't go with the, um, with, with, uh, what, what's it called? Um, glass sarcophaguses. They've gone with like lead mostly it looks like. Yeah, which is actually a really nice color. I like the look of the lead sarcophaguses and it makes sense. I mean, why would you use such a heavy material? for something to be moving all the time. I mean, there's silver tables around the edges, and I, once again, I, I really like this kind of central area. Over here on the side uh, is a big old dormitory for anybody who needs beds. And uh, then this is my favorite feature of this fortress, but between this and the tavern, um, is this huge forest garden down here. Uh, if you want to make a forest garden yourself, uh, simply pour a bunch of water on the ground, um, then make sure that there's two or three Z levels worth of open space above it, and uh, then just wait like five, six 
years. Like it takes it takes a while, but in my opinion, it's very much worth the wait because you you get you get like these beautiful underground forests. And for me, like they they are my favorite places to just let animals live and let my grazers exist because it's like you make them a little habitat. Like right right now in my um, main fort, I I'm kind of planning on having like giant crabs and like maybe some uh, cavern critters just underground. And as you can see, this is the drainage that they use to go off the edge of the map. So they dug right up to the edge of the map, they smoothed it, and then they fortified it so that the water can flow off the edge. So I guess they just fill, let it just fill up for a couple of years and then let it drain all entirely. And then boom, you have yourself a uh, artificial cavern layer that's completely safe for you to use. Then down here is a huge food stockpile. It's, uh, I've been, I haven't mentioned it, but that is a lot of food. Like I, I would start selling some of that off. You don't quite need all of that, but hey, lots of food variety. Very happy dwarves in this fort. So I'm sure they're not complaining. And the frame rate seems fine enough. I mean, for me, when I was letting it run, it was running at what, 40? So it's actually running pretty well, all things considered, a size, uh, all, all size considered. And then we have a massive dungeon which goes around the edge of the uh, volcano. I've done dungeons just like that, big fan. Uh, around the edge, we have another barracks as well as no more offices and such. Then we have uh, body bits and uh, bits of forgotten beasts uh, and whatnot. I wonder why those are forbidden. Maybe they're trying to save them for a project or something. Uh, and then uh, corpse piles, of course. Um, and then down here, we have uh, this very uh, creative sequence of doorways uh, for, for locking big critters such as... Um, Three wins. I guess this Forgotten Beast has killed three Forgotten Beasts. Yep, looks like it killed a Wuffy, a Ulvash, a, and a Nimil, uh, an Etten. So what a what, what a what a murder monster. Um, and then uh, up above it, uh, is there a way out for them? Are, are you like releasing them? I don't know. Over here we have a a Forgotten Beast, a Silk Farm, uh, using um, these. Uh, a giant olms, poor giant olms. Uh, the, the dwarves all run in and collect the stuff. And then uh, I'm assuming they, they pull this lever. Yep, they pull that lever and then all the bridges come down and they shoot out the webs and then they go do it again. Very effective uh, method of farming silk. And then as we move down uh, a few more layers, uh, we're going to hit the next cavern layer, uh, which is, or, or the first cavern layer, rather, which is a very beautiful, expansive cavern layer. Not a bunch of construction, not a lot of construction going on in here. In fact, I would say there's almost none. Uh, and then we can just move down, 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 down. And we hit the second uh, partially formed volcano, which is right there. Um, and then we hit this uh, very uh, crundle infested layer um, with tons of blood and stuff. I kind of love the fact that like the blood actually, uh, pushes away the, um, the mud in a lot of cases. You can actually see the lichen growing underneath the, the blood. It's kind of cool. Uh, and then down here we have like a, a way for letting the beasts in. We can continue moving down, continue moving further down. There's a lot of violence going on in this layer with all the bl just blood everywhere. <laughs> Um, YouTube, please don't demonetize this. Uh, it's, I'm just commenting on the fact that there's blood everywhere. I'm not actually showing any gratuitous ultraviolence. This is just cartoonish at best. YouTube, please. Uh, and then eventually we will get down to the Magma Sea. And this seems to be about as far as they've gone. Yeah, I, I, I'm very, very, like, happy with the looks of this fort. Especially that massive tavern. Um, very, very cool. And the, uh, the glass structure above the tavern is also pretty awesome. As, uh... Very much not something you, uh, you uh, even though you, you have to make sure that you're wearing your thong in this fortress, um, I, I gotta say, like, the giant ulm enclosure combined with the massive, um, uh, what, what, uh, library, I think, like, maybe the one thing that I would do if I were to add something to this would be to go around the edges of this and add in, like, a water basin or something, do, like, some sort of water feature around here, and then maybe color the floors in a little bit with different colors and materials, but aside from that, this is just awesome, I, I especially love these holes looking down into the, into the caverns, it's, it's just real cool, maybe put some, like, holes in places where, like, the trees could actually, like, pop up and out or something, I don't know, this just looks really cool, I, I really quite like this fortress, and uh, thank you very much for sending it into the show. If you want to see more videos like this and more uh, fortresses that people from the community have made, uh, simply jump over uh, to the YouTube channel. There's a growing playlist of these uh, where, uh, you know, there's just... I think there's like 50 something now we're, we're getting into the fifties. There, there's been quite a few of them. And once again, if you would like to send in a fortress yourself, simply jump down to the description of this video and uh, join the discord server and find the DF save sharing room. And uh, if you would like to support this channel directly, you can buy a piece of merchandise over on my merch store or alternatively uh, check out my Patreon or Twitch streams over at twitch.tv slash B L I N D I R L. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.